you if you want to. So I can tell it's recording now because it says that, okay? So you can just leave it like that through the whole service if you want. I'll sit back here if you want to sit back here, you can, and then when it's over, we'll shut her down. Okay? I think your sister or somebody took your papers. Oh, but yeah, I guess that was fine. to mention a couple things, give you guys a chance to see if there's anything you want to announce. First, I want to thank everybody for their help last Sunday. Uh, you might go check out the, the new kitchen floor. I think it looks great. Um, and so thank you, thank you everybody for your help. Uh, next, uh, if you're looking for another opportunity to do some work around the church, next Saturday morning is going to be our spring cleanup. Uh, we'll be here from 8 to 12. Keep in mind that you can come in any time and uh, do anything you feel that needs to be needs to be done. Just leave us a note so we don't come in and wash the windows again or something. Uh, but next Saturday is our is our formal spring cleanup. Okay. Any other announcements you guys would like to share? Yes. And so, hers for stuff. Thank you. 
important that the people of God, that's all of us, have music in our worship. And uh, you'll discover that when we're working through this today. Um, and um, I'm going to leave a couple of things out since we're doing, <laughs> since we're doing um, uh, more music than we usually do. So have you found anything you don't know?
please join me in the responsive call of worship. O oh Christ, in your resurrection, the heavens and the earth rejoice. Alleluia. By your resurrection, you broke open the gates of hell and destroyed sin and death. Keep us victorious over sin. By your resurrection, you raised the dead and brought us from death to life. Guide us to the way of eternal life. By your resurrection, you confounded your guards and executioners and filled your disciples with joy. Give us joy in your service. By your resurrection, you proclaimed good news to the women and apostles and brought salvation to the whole world. Direct our lives as your new creation. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In 108.
looks like a kid's sermon time, right? So it says, so you get to come up in the front over here. So I can sit down in the pew only this. Oh, do we, oh yes. We can't include the children in that. Let's include the children in that since I blew that one already. Since you're already on your way up. And then you can sneak out. Okay, how are you this morning? You can do it. All right, Jesus is talking today about the vine. The adults are going to hear about the vine. You know what a vine is? I brought um, you know, I want us to kind of understand a little bit better what Jesus meant when he said he was divine. Um, I think it's divine, but it's so divine, it's got roots on And Jesus gives us life and gives life to this plant because these leaves are a part of the plant, the body. Now, if I take a leaf off of here, which I'm going to do, I want you to tell me if this leaf is going to live. Is that, is that leaf going to live? Is it going to grow anymore? No, why not? Because it's not connected with the leaves, so it's taking water. Good for you. The same way that that leaf right there was connected to this vine is the same idea that we have in this sermon today. That we cannot be followers of Christ without being connected to him as a part of his family, the church, the body of Christ. Okay? So the same way that we are connected to Jesus like the leaves of the vine, Jesus gives us life. It is through Jesus that we have life. Do you believe that? Okay, so that is true. That's a very true statement. Now, one of the ways that we can stay connected to Jesus is through coming to Sunday school, coming to church, and that's why I'm really glad that you're here this morning, because that makes you connected to the family of God. Now, can you think of way, other ways that you can stay connected to the body, <clears throat> to Jesus? Again, okay, I can answer to it. So, pray. Yes? So you lose your voice. Almost. Um, pray. Okay, what else?
Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today comes from Acts uh, 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Kansas, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join him. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was like this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about yourself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and started with this scripture. He proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent, prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. <coughs> when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Estes, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came Psalm in your bulletin together. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My mouth shall obey before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For to many he belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall Second reading from 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. 
And this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as a Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or a sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have for him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Thus ends today's reading. We will stand and sing him 495. The one you now know. branches. 
Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you may bear fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. tell you how wonderful you sounded with that hymn. <laughs> you learned a new hymn today. You did an absolutely marvelous job. Okay, I see there's one Easter lily left. It's the fifth Sunday of Easter. So the Easter lilies are all but gone, and spring is here, and Jesus is risen from the dead. Have you ever seen that commercial, even the television program called Married at First Sight? You seen that? It's on A&E, I think. I watched it one night and I thought, what a dumb show. <laughs> it's about people who meet for the first time when the bride is walking down the aisle. Can you imagine? I, I was dumbfounded that somebody would put a television show on like that in the first place. Anyway, the word on the street is that love is easy. We just do it. We talk about chemistry, and indeed the scientists tell us that chemistry has something to do with physical attraction. However, we know that love goes further than physical attraction. We love our parents and our children and our grandchildren. We love our friends, and there's a whole neglected tradition of love between friends that has absolutely nothing to do with physical attraction. If we think about it, physical attraction does not necessarily have anything to do with love. And we are also called to practice resurrection and new life in love. Tomorrow, in the Episcopal Church calendar, and actually in your calendar too if we were to look at it, is the Feast of St. Monica, who was the mother of St. Augustine of Hippo. He was a great scholar and writer and preacher. And we know from Augustine's uh, autobiography what a pivotal role she played in his path to Christianity. Augustine must have absolutely driven his poor mother to distraction as he went off on his, detan on his tangent. Had a liaison with a woman out of wedlock who bore him a son, and then just as he set off for North Africa to begin his career as a bishop, she died. The love she had for her son was a suffering love. And therein lies our problem. Love is, for us, is all bound up in with bliss and happiness. The very idea that love includes suffering seems repugnant. And surely if suffering intrudes on love, something is wrong. Embracing suffering seems deviant, a form of masochism. Yes, love may bring us suffering, but that means we think that something tragic has occurred. To our minds, loving and liking are allies. We don't tend to like someone whose behavior offends us, or at least if that person persists in doing things that annoy us. In short, love, we think, has something to do with affinity. Many parishes pride themselves on being very loving. And when a parish is in search of, in the search mode for a new pastor, it assures prospective ones that everyone loves everyone. Just try being someone who is braved coming through those doors, found a vacant pew, tried to negotiate the liturgy and then found their way to coffee hour. 
he or she then sees love in action. Groups of people form impenetrable circles. Each group is made up of people long accepted in the circle, bound by an affinity made up of shared backgrounds, of longevity, perhaps political beliefs and shared interests. Even if the visitor manages to gain entrance, the subjects discussed involve an element of shared experience foreign to a visitor. Love turns out to mean an easy acceptance of people we know well. In today's lessons, we meet an uncomfortably different form of love. The lesson from the Acts of the Apostles recounts the meeting between Philip, the Jewish convert, a deacon, and not with a non-Jewish Ethiopian court official. Immediately, the two men are divided by race, religion, and social class. Yet Philip is instructed by the Spirit to, to approach the Ethiopian. The eunuch is reading Isaiah, one of the passages that, that new Christians identified as prophecy about like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb silent before its shears, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Now Philip has the difficult task of explaining that crucifixion, where Jesus was killed like an animal sacrifice was the most sublime offering of love. How on earth was he going to do that? To begin with, Philip had to remember that the love he has for God is a love that acknowledges that God loves him so much that his own follies, mistakes, unkindnesses, and cruelties don't stop God's piercing through the depth of Philip, of who Philip really was. God loves us so much that he has a picture of each of us <coughs> on his refrigerator door. Did you get that? Okay. Giggle. Okay. Philip knows that as the writer of the first epistle of John will write later, loving God and being loved by God demands that we love others. Philip also knows that the only hope he has to get through the barrier, uh, barrier of differentness is to claim what happened to him when he was baptized. In baptism, he was grafted into Jesus, the true vine. Jesus' love alone enables Philip to love the Ethiopian enough to share what he has come to know, what he has enabled him, what has enabled him to become a disciple. And now that loving discipleship is going to bear fruit as he leads the Ethiopian into the pool and there to be baptized, adopted, grafted, and welcomed into the kingdom. The queen of Ethiopia's servant is to become a servant of the king of kings and lord of lords. We were once given that priceless gift when those who loved us brought us to baptism. Did they also know that we were being invited into a living, suffering, costly love? Do we accept that we are being drawn toward the sacrifice of true love? In our natural selves, we run from relationships that turn into hurt for us. We may even physically recoil from such pain the opposite of physical attraction. That is why we hold our hands out today for bread and the cup, for Christ himself. He alone can give us strength to overcome that which separates us from the person who needs to be baptized or needs to revisit his or her baptism. That person whose lifestyle, habits, opinions are so different from our own offends us and makes us want to walk away. Believe it or not, by being Christians, we accept that our vocation in life is to bear fruit, the fruit of love, 
and to make disciples. As we heard read in today's epistle, there is no fear in love, perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a sister or brother whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their sisters and brothers also. I pray that these words may find a place. Join us in the prayer, prayers of the people. O oh Christ, after your resurrection, you appeared to your disciples. You breathed on them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You gave joy and exaltation to the whole creation. Through your victory, we pray to you. Risen Christ, hear us. You sent us up your disciples to teach us all nations and to baptize them in your name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You promised to be with them and us until the end of the world. Through your victory, we pray to you. Pray. Christ, hear us. 
O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name, but do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
rise in our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. Eternal God, creator of ru and ruler of the universe, at your <coughs> word the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among your creatures to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. Your love remained steadfast. When we were slaves in Egypt, you broke the bonds of our oppression, brought us through the sea to freedom, and made covenant to be our God. By the pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey, and to set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice in the prophets, and made the word made flesh. You lived among us, manifesting your glory. He died that we might live, and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice and was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart and met with violence and death. By your power, he broke free from the prison of the tomb and at his command the gates of hell were opened. The one who was dead now lives, and the one who humbled himself is raised to rule over all creation. The lamb upon the throne, the one ascended on high, is with us always as he cries. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus on the night before he died took bread, <clears throat> and after giving thanks, to you he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup, saying, This cup of the new covenant is sealed in my blood, shed for you and the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the re redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. This as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in our world. Nourish at this table, O God, that we may know Christ's redemptive love and live a new life in him. Help us who recognize our Lord in the breaking of the bread to see and serve him in all whose lives are broken. Give us who are hungry, Give us grace to share our bread with those who are hungry and the hungry of heart. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Hallelujah, Christ. 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the people. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. We have recalled your mighty acts in holy history. We have seen your power in sending light to conquer darkness, the fire to give us light, and the bread of heaven to nourish us in love. Send us with your salvation and your joy to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be with you and remain with you always amen Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Lord.